Hey guys, just want to talk about my Breda 92FS and upgrading it. Uh, mainly going to be talking about the frame today. Uh, this slide right here is a Breda 92FS Vertex slide. Uh, my slide's actually off to Wilson Combat being, uh, having the sights changed on it, having the front sight um, drilled out to re have a fiber optic. Uh, I can do the sights generally by myself. I don't trust myself to drill it out. Uh, so they're going to be putting on a battle notch on the, the squared battle sight. Um, on the rear. On that model, I actually used the single sided Wilson Comet low profile safety, but let's talk about modifying the frame, uh, frame of your 92FS. So, uh, the frame of the 92FS, um, people kind of, 92 aficionados kind of think of it as not the best frame, uh, mainly because it doesn't have checkering, the magazine well is not beveled, and there's no rail for a light if that's your thing. Um, I have one of those frames that is has a rail and is beveled, and that's a Vertec frame. And I like it a lot. I have another one, which is a 90-2 frame, which has a rail and a beveled uh, magazine well, and actually has some checkering. But this um, FS frame is most likely what you have. Most of the guns that you find are Brighton 92 FSs or M9s, and this is the kind of frame that you're going to come on your standard military issue M9 unless you're the Marine Corps and have the really nice M9A1 frame. The M1, the M9A1 frame is considered to be the best frame, not the 92A1, but the M9A1 because of its checkering, its beveled mag well, and its uh, rail for uh, an accessory like a white light. But if you have one of these, uh, I'll show you how to kind of make the best out of it. Uh, this is my enhanced service pistol in IDPA and my uh, carry gun. Uh, for the summer months, not for the summer months, winter months. Summer months, I go to something a little bit smaller, like a uh, like this Bursa BP9. I actually really like this gun. We'll talk about that more later. But um, I like the frame. Uh, most of the holsters you find are going to actually fit this frame and not the other frames. Um, with the non rail, it actually carries pretty well. So, and instead of like the Vertec, the slant frame, like the M9A3 and the Vertec, I actually like how this frame fills my hand. And I've never, the checkering, I've messed around with the checkering, um, never find it really to bug me all that much. I actually like the way this feels, and it doesn't feel like it's slipping in my hand regardless. But let's talk about upgrading the frame. So uh, most of your frame work is going to be the trigger job, and we'll talk about that last. But uh, right off the bat, I use a Elite Hammer. And the reason I use an Elite Hammer is it speeds up the drop making if you use a lighter um, hammer spring. Uh, you're more likely to get more reliable um, ignition off of those uh, primers. So that uh, hammer spring, I use a 13-pound Wolf hammer spring. I buy them in 10 packs. And uh, those work well in combination with the, Wol with the uh, Wilson Combat trigger bar. If you actually have their standard Breda 92 trigger bar, they're going to work for a little bit. And then once they start to take a set, onto that strut, they're going to compress a little bit, take a set on that strut, they're going to be a little less reliable and you're going to start noticing that in the double action. We'll talk a little bit about that more later. I actually hand beveled um, the magazine well with some files like you see here. Um, that tends to help out a lot in the reload process. So I reload, get a curved file and some flat files and I just beveled this out. It looks a little scrappy but when you reload the gun it's going to start looking scrappy anyway. So you can take some high grit sandpaper and polish it up, which I'll do with the Dremel here in a little bit, but um, that's what I do. And it makes a considerable difference when reloading the gun, especially under duress or in competition. Um, when you're not as precise as you need to be, it can really help out. On the standard FS frame, uh, with some of the magazines, you're going to run into roadblocks of catching the magazine lips on the non-beveled magazine well. So if you're going to have one and you don't really care about IDPA stock service pistol, uh, then go ahead and do this. This is production legal. It's considered an internal modification in USPSA production, but the Wilson Combat Mag Guide is not, so I'd have to remove that to shoot in USPSA production. But this is a big help. I think um, aesthetically it looks more pleasing. And two, it actually really helps with the uh, reloads. Um, helps blend that perfectly. So with a beveled magazine well on this, your reloads are flying kind of right in. And I shot an M&P for a long time and the M&P kind of has this standard with the uh, little tool that you remove out of the grip. So that's pretty cool. 
Uh, oversized magazine release. I think these are super important. I have them all on my 92 FSs. The one thing about the 92 FS magazine releases is it doesn't stick out like the Glocks so much as it is wider and longer. So it kind of shortens the diff the distance that your thumb has to travel to push it out. So and that makes it so unlike the Glocks and some of the other ones is that when you lay it down and you push it, it does not kick out the magazine. So if you have a table start or you're grabbing the gun off of a surface and you push it down while you're grabbing it, it does not kick out the magazine. But once you have it in your hand, it's actually pretty easy. So another little tip on the reloading are the magazines. Um, the Metgar magazine is the most superior, the 18 round anti-friction magazine. And the reason it's superior is not because it has more rounds or whatever, it's because the way the feed lips are bent that they're not going to get caught anywhere on the magazine well. It actually tapers up. The Beretta factory magazines are pretty squared, so they're more likely to get caught on surfaces. They're still great magazines. I still have a bunch of them, but that's just one of the things to consider when you're buying magazines. So moving up on the pistol, we already talked about the extended magazine release, the belt magazine, and the um, mag guide. Uh, trigger work. The trigger work is pretty darn important. So we talked about 13 pound mainspring, 12 pound mainsprings, 11 pound mainsprings or whatever. You can get those to work reliably with the Wilson Combat trigger bar. And the trigger bar is about $80 for it's like you call the action tune kit. Comes with a 14 pound, a 13 pound, a 12 pound recoil, I mean uh, mainspring. But it comes with this trigger bar and this trigger bar is the Shiznat. And the reason that it is Unlike the factory trigger bar, is that when you pull it back in double action, right about here, try to catch it a bit, hopefully you can see it, right about where the frame and the slide meet is where that hammer is going to slip in double, double action mode. And single action mode is going to rest well below that. With the Wilson Combat trigger bar, the Wilson Combat trigger bar, what's going to happen is, it's going to go farther than where the slide in the frame meets by a little bit and then drop. So basically it's going to fire in the same position as a single action hammer drop. So what that means is that you're going to get more speed, more travel time on that double action pull. So it's going to be um, just as reliable as a single action. Most of your light primer strikes are going to come on the double action uh, just because it's not going as far back. So if you, once again, if you don't mind being kicked out of stock service pistol or you could just not tell them, um, the Wilson trigger bar is one of the upgrades I highly recommend. Uh, steel trigger is a big plus, and also the Wolf um, trigger re trigger spring trigger return spring conversion kit, which basically makes it a captive spring set up on a really nice system. So that way, that if the spring's not going to break, it puts less stress on the spring itself. And so one of the things that actually breaks a lot on the Bretas are the trigger return springs. And once that breaks, the trigger's not going to want to go forward. So um, $19 of investment there is going to be well worth the money. So when I get the slide in, we'll show you guys the slide, and we'll show you some more shooting videos of it later. But I just want to give you a little taste of how I actually set up my FS frame. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll get right to them and listen to the Paracast.